Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you um, for all your support and love and so happy to have you here for another episode of a Better Way to Heal podcast. And let's get right into it. In this episode, I'm talking about weight loss resistance and how it ties into the health of your gut. So being fresh into a new year, so many people have the resolution, the goal of losing weight. And that is probably, if it's not the number one health goal out there, it is definitely near the top. And I hear it all the time. People get so frustrated with the fact that the numbers on the scales aren't, aren't changing. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I eat and how much I move my body. I'm not losing weight. And I truly believe that if that is the only measurement that you are using to tell you whether or not you're having success on your health journey, I would challenge you and highly suggest that you start with a different route. So yeah, I'm diving right into it. I'm hitting the hard, hard hitting topics here, but I have told friends family members, clients, um, throw out your scale, get rid of it. It's there as a tool, but if that is your driving force um, for what you eat that day, how you move your body, let it go. Do not let that number, that scale, tell you what you can and cannot do for that day, that week. You need to do what intuitively feels good to you. So that's just my little PSA for that. And that's a driving force behind why I'm doing this episode because I think there's so many of you out there who need to hear this message because I just hear it so much and I just want to break down that barrier of, well, I'm not losing weight so I'm not accomplishing my goal or I'm not getting healthier and that is a lie. And that is a lie you're telling yourself. So let it, let, let's, uh, let's, let's peel back that onion, right? So weight loss resistance has a lot of reasons why it's happening in your body. Um, end of the day, it comes back to gut health, but it also starts with what are you putting in your body? So nutrition and exercise are not the only things that need to happen in order for you to be able to lose weight. Move your body, making the right choices, picking whole foods, like shopping the exterior of your store, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, fibrous food, having prebiotics, probiotics, all those things. So what is happening for a lot of people is they're actually nutrient deficient which is so big in weight loss resistance. And why gut health ties into that is when you have an inflamed gut, you have a lot of of extra garbage in your gut with the inflammation happening. Maybe you have bad bacteria. You are not able to absorb. You are not able to digest. You are not able to metabolize the foods that you're eating. So that's why I get into nutrition is not the only the key to success because you need to be able to absorb the nutrition that you're eating. So you could be eating the best foods and not getting the nutrition from those foods. If you are not looking at the underlying cause of why you are holding on to that weight, which is your gut. So some common things that people are deficient in when there are gut issues is magnesium, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A, vitamin D, omegas, zinc, um, vitamin B is a big one, and vitamin B12 to be specific, which is also a a root cause of anemia. So we live in a society that is overfed and undernourished, just like I was talking about. You may be putting those calories into your body, but if your body can't accept those because of the state of affairs that it's in, you're going to be undernourished because you're not going to absorb those, those nutrients, those vitamins, those minerals, those good things that you might be eating. Or maybe you're not making the best choices 
and you're getting the calories you need, but you're eating a bag of chips, you're eating ice cream as your source of nutrition every day. So there's a couple different ways to look at that. So you could be making the right choices, but your body isn't ready to, to take those on. You could be making the wrong choices, but you're getting enough calories, so you're putting on weight um, and you're not getting nutrition. Poor functioning metabolism, like I mentioned, if you have inflammation in your gut, your body isn't able to break things down. So you have these little hair-like follicles in your intestine. You have 25 feet of intestine between your small and your large intestine. And those little microvilli are actually what draws in um, almost like the roots of a plant, bringing in the water and nutrition from the soil. Those little microvilli in your intestines are what bring in the nutrition that you need from the foods that you're eating. So when that is not functioning at its highest level and metabolism, you're not breaking the food down, it actually is just going out as waste and unused potentially. Um, looking at the foods we're eating, if you're eating a lot of high fructose corn syrup, you're getting a lot of empty calories in your, I don't want to say nutrition because most foods that have high fructose corn syrup in them are not technically nutritious foods. If you really thought about it, they're probably not foods at all. When I think about foods that we should be eating, they may have one ingredient, an orange, an apple, um, broccoli, cauliflower, you know, your greens, your kale, your Swiss chard. Those are the foods you should be eating. Those are foods. When we get into those packaged foods that tend to have the high fructose corn syrup, those are highly processed foods that our body does not necessarily know what the heck to do with. And we've all been there, okay? We've all had phases of our lives that we have chosen the bag of chips over, you know, the fruit bowl. Um, so we're, we're all guilty. I'm guilty. I'm sure all of you out there are like, mm, okay, I'm putting my hand up, Rach. I'm with you. So that's where you need to get into foods that are clean sourced and as pure as possible. It's tough to know exactly everything that's happened to that food, but if you can pick foods that have limited ingredients, then you know your body is going to have a much better chance of being able to break that down and recognizing that as food and nutrition. So when we look at things that we should be swaying towards, we have, when we're looking at lean proteins, if we're looking at animal-based proteins, which is going to be another topic for a podcast in the near future, um, plant-based versus animal-based proteins, but if we're looking at the animal base, we wanna look at the best sources possible that we can be getting our plant, or excuse me, our animal based protein. So grass fed, organic. Um, if you know a local farmer and you, you trust them and you know that they use clean methods, um, they don't feed their cows grains, they get to be free and are grass fed, um, they're not giving them hormones or steroids or things to, to help increase the, their production of milk or to, you know, growth hormones, then local is best if you can do that, you know, fresher is better. Um, but that is a whole nother source of, of debate too, is, is the animal proteins. Um, if eggs, if you're getting free range eggs, you're taking on the energy of the food that you're eating. Animal-based food, you're taking on the energy of that said chicken. Were they in a cage and stressed out and living in the feces of theirs and other chickens? Or were they free to roam, had a great life? All those things. Just some food for thought. No pun intended. Whole foods. So as I was talking, we need to really make that decision to choose you know, fruits and veggies. If you can buy local at a farmer's market, even better. If you can't, organic is best if you can afford to do it. Um, so your nuts, your seeds, your, your things that are sourced from the earth. Those are your best, your best options. 
And those are actually the foods that are going to feed your body. They're actually recognizable. Your body can break them down. And if you have issues, you now I've had clients in the past that have had issues breaking down a lot of fruits and vegetables. That is another telltale sign that you have gut issues. So we need to back that up and heal the guts to improve the ability of your body to lose extra weight if that is your goal. Inflammation is a huge source of um, holding on to weight. A lot of that is water weight. So when you have a lot of inflammation in the body and the core, the root of that is inflammation in the gut. Because once you have beat up the gut enough, that, that, is, that inflammation in your gut is going to spread all over the body. So leaky gut syndrome is a, is a cause of weight loss resistance because of a lot of the things I have already said. Leaky gut. So if you think of, you know, there's tight junctions in our guts and they kind of form like a bridge or a very tight closed door. And once we pound that door enough, we start um, causing holes and perforations. And what happens is you actually have toxins and sometimes actual food particles flowing back into your bloodstream. So when your body is so stressed out about trying to heal something that you just keep pounding on anyway, so that never, it never does heal. It uses so much energy just to try to sustain where it's at, even if it's not at a good place, but it's trying just to not get worse. You don't have the energy. Your body's going to hold on to everything you give it to for that energy source. So all the food that you give it, it's going to hold on to it. And weight loss is not going to happen. Your body's protecting itself. Your body knows okay, I got to find a way to survive. And if, if he or she is going to continue to eat this food that is like damaging my, because your gut is your immune system, your gut is your hormones. It keeps damaging all these systems because of what she's eating every day or what he's eating every day. Weight loss is like a luxury item. If you want to look at it that way, and I'll be honest, I don't know where that just came from, but weight loss is a luxury item. Weight loss happens when all other systems are go. You've healed your gut. You've created an environment where your body's like, all right, I can rebuild and I don't need this protective layer of fat that's, that's sustaining, potentially sustaining and allowing you to survive. We're in this to thrive, not survive. I mean, we need to survive, right? I mean, but that's like a low level thought process. Thriving is this high level, like, well, I'm going to survive, but I freaking want to, you know, thrive through this life, you know? So how do we, how do we start to heal the guts? Because I'm telling you, let go of the scale. I'm telling you, you're not going to lose that weight if weight is your, is your goal for 2020 and beyond. You've got to heal your guts. So nutrition-based treatment, and what the heck am I, am I saying about meaning by that? You got to add in the whole foods. You got to add in the water, drinking at least half your body weight. You got to add in good sources and clean sources of protein. And for some people, I will tell them like, hey, let's get you doing more, more smoothie-based meals. And for some of you, this is not super exciting. But what this is, is this is a beautiful way to get you nutrition. And it's easy for your body to break it down. So not only are you giving your body the food that it wants and needs to rebuild, but you're also making it easier for your body to to break that down because it's already in the liquid form. Um, so a big focus is whole foods, shopping the exterior of your store, as I mentioned before. And I do promote, and I, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to get into this in the, in the future episode, plant-based. You don't have to be 100% plant-based, but Meat of any kind, even the cleanest, most grass-fed organic animal, 
it is going to be harder for your body to break it down. And it is also going to be inflammatory. So if we're in a state where we really need to heal the gut and we need to be more aggressive, I will talk to people about let's add. And notice I'm saying add. I'm never talking about getting rid of. I don't say never. I shouldn't say never because I am going to talk about just you need to look at some groups of quote food, <laughs> um, but items of choice that you're deciding to put in your body. But you heal the gut by improving the choices that you're making at least 80% of the time. You don't have to be perfect unless you are at a point where you know you need to be aggressive with, with what you're putting in your body because you need to heal and you want to heal quickly because you want to feel better. So uh, prioritizing potentially a plant-based model, having healthy fats like olive oil, nuts and seeds, coconut, um, avocado oils. But avocado is great. I love avocados. You can do so many things with them. Throw them in your shake. Um, make a very simple guacamole. Dip some veggies in that. So there's so much you can do. Making sure you're getting enough healthy, clean sources of protein. Protein is the building block of healing. It's the building block of putting muscle on. But again, muscle won't happen unless your body is in a state where it's ready to build and it's not in a state where it's trying to heal. So a lot of these results that people want to get, um, whether it's weight loss, whether it's getting stronger, whether it's putting muscle on, whether... If, if your gut is in disarray and your that system is not working 100% efficiency, even 90%, <laughs> you're going to have trouble with those goals. So that's why I wanted to get on and, and give this to you early on in the year because I know so many of you have goals that center around athletic um, health and wellness goals or just you know losing weight for health reasons. Um, and you, you're frustrated and I hear it and I feel you. And I just, I'm telling you, this is where you got to start. You got to start at the core, which is your gut. You also have to look into gut healing nutrients, um, supplements. I am a strong believer that supplements get you where you need to go faster. And I also believe that they are a lifestyle that's there's that you will continue with. Um, you need things in your body like enzymes, digestive enzymes to help you break things down, especially um, if you are having trouble with that right now. If you're seeing undigested food in your poop, you, that's a sign you need enzymes. A prebiotic, a probiotic. So the prebiotic feeds the probiotic. Phytonutrients, which you can get from fruits and veggies and fibrous choices of foods. You can also um, find a supplement that has that in it, which I use myself. Um, I use a product um, every day and I put it in my smoothie. I have a power pack smoothie every morning and it just starts my day off the best way possible. Um, managing stress, 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 stress. So that's another thing as you're healing your gut because 70 to 90%, depending on what hormone we're talking about, that hormone starts in your gut. So cortisol is your stress hormone. If we can lower that cortisol throughout the day, um, we all have stress, but it is that continuous low burning stress that we go through every single day that is what damages, it actually damages our gut as well. Stress does so many things to our body that we don't even realize. Um, getting adequate sleep, you, that ties right into stress. So if we can lower the stress that we're having throughout the day, we're going to improve our ability to sleep. And I have talked about um, sleep and stress in a previous episode. Um, and exercising, moving, move your body. I, I've kind of switched my verbiage from exercise to movement because for some people, exercise is, is this dirty word. Like it's so like, oh, I have to go to the gym and lift weights and no, just get outside for a walk. If you're in your house, like 
do some yoga, stretch your body, do some sit-ups, do some push-ups, do some squats, do body weight things. You don't even need equipment. You need like a four by four space. Anything you got, you can do this. You can do this. When you're moving your body, you decrease your stress, you rid your body of toxins because you're moving your lymphatic system and you balance your blood sugar because you're balancing out hormones. So some people have, a lot of people ask me what I recommend. And with my business, I have started, I partnered with a company, a mental wellness company that focuses on the gut brain access. And this is what I'm recommending. I'm recommending this, we're terming it now in our, our team is the magic three. And this is looking at feeding your gut, your brain, and the, the connection between the two. And I'm telling you, once you can heal the gut, you're, you're healing the immune system because your gut is your immune system. You're, you're building up the communication between the gut and the brain. So the hormones are synchronizing the way they should. You are using your, your serotonin how you should, your insulin like you should, your thyroid hormone, all these systems that are directly related to gut health. Once you heal the gut, you're healing these other systems. And these systems you need to help regulate weight. So I'm happy to answer more questions if you're listening to this episode and you want to know specifically what I'm using, let me know. I want to do is I would love to do some episodes talking more in depth about the specific products that I use on my, I use myself, I use with my clients, anyone that even shows any interest in gut health at all. I talk to them about the system because the system is proven. Um, it's science-based. It works. There's really nothing else to say in regards to that. So I hope that this was helpful for you as you're headed into, you know, we're in 2020, but we're early on into 2020. I want you to hit your goals. I want you to be successful. And this is just a light bulb moment maybe for some of you or just reinforcing something maybe you have heard in the past. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you got some real true value from this. And if you did, I would love for you to subscribe and review this podcast. So I appreciate the support. It's needed for me to get my message out there to more people. And I also like to see and hear uh, feedback. So I'm, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you and to be able to spread this message to the world is, is why I left my six figure income being a pharmacist. So there, there's a huge, huge mission that I'm on and I want you to be on this mission with me and I want you to heal yourself. And with that power that you gain healing yourself, you have the power to heal others. And that is what we're all here to do is help each other on this journey, this journey through life. So Again, until next time, be happy and be healthy.